Hello friends, good morning, good evening, namaste. Welcome back to the second lecture in the orientation program series. So in the last lecture, uh, you must have definitely figured out why a cardiac surgeon intrigue, was intrigued by Ayurveda and what kind of research we did. So to summarize, uh, there are three agents in the body, the Vata agent, the Pitta and the Kapha agent. Uh, guiding several millions and trillions of chemical interactions, I mean chemical reactions and interactions respectively. And when they, these three agents are in equal proportion in each of the seven tissues and 42 organs, then the body actually sets itself into a self-healing mode and cures itself. So just to give an example, from our electrophysiological studies, what we can certainly say is Vata induces hyperexcitability. Pitta makes the tissue spontaneously reactive and kapha makes it hyporeactive. So how do you apply this into you know, understanding the tissue behavior? I usually give the example of uh, the World Trade Center pummeling and uh, you see three different responses from three different groups. There was one group which ran towards the building and what it means is these people love, you know, uh, when they see a problem, they love facing it face to face and then addressing it, you know, they, they're not afraid of anything, they, they're very logical, extremely brilliant, extremely brave, and they're very, very precise and extremely active. So this group would, should be called as a Pitta group. According to Ayurveda, Pitta has all these characteristics, or Pitta confirms these characteristics to individuals who have Pitta predominance. There was another group which ran away from the building, Helter Skelter. So this group must have had a vata reactivity in the brain. The moment they saw this building pummeling down, the minds of these people ended up with several impulses because uh, recollect from the electrophysiological studies that the resting membrane potential comes very close to threshold membrane in vata mediated uh, hearts and because of which uh, the tissue becomes hyper excitable and the, when the brain tissue becomes hyper excitable because of Vata aggravation, the brain produces more, more signals, more impulses. You, you end up with too many thoughts. You don't know which thought to pick and which thought to leave and then you don't know what to pursue, what to not. So you run away from the problem helter-skelter. And there was another group which was looking at the building pummeling down, completely dumbstruck. These must have been the people who had kapha possibly in the brain. Kapha, as we, uh, you should recollect, uh, makes the tissues hypo-excitable, which means they require a large external stimulus for their brains to actually you know, elicit an, a response. And because the tissue is in a state of hypo-excitability, uh, the tissue becomes sluggish. One, sluggish in responding and sluggish in also receiving the information. So this pretty much explains three different responses for the same external stimulus front. So this is how the Vata, Pitta, Kapha translate into even uh, every aspect of biological interaction. The immunological response could be Vata mediated, Pitta or Kapha mediated. The, the biochemical reactions could be Vata, Pitta or Kapha mediated, you know, and depending on the predominance of which of these doshas, the reaction moves in that direction. So this is very precisely of uh, what we should know as doctors of practical applications of this VPK uh, predominance in individual tissues and uh, at every level of biological interaction. So now with this understanding, uh, let's move further. So friends, we all know that you know there are several nutrients. We're not disputing that there are no nutrients. There are nutrients in Ayurveda also gives a clear-cut understanding and distinction between the, the nutrients and the doshas. The nutrients are given uh, several names, you know, we not, will not talk about that. When you have your food or when whatever is ingested, it first gets uh, digested, isn't it? In the gastrointestinal tract, you know, uh, the amylase uh, or the pop, the ptylin in the salivary gland acts on the carbs. <clears throat> makes them slightly softer, then you ingest the bolus, the bolus enters the stomach. In the stomach, uh, the food, the, the bolus is subjected to uh, uh, enzymatic action of the pepsin and uh, se several proteolytic enzymes and you know from the proteins, dipeptones and tripeptones form. The food then you know gets masticated, subjected to the action of HCL coming in from the peptic cells for about three hours and after three hours the food enters the uh, first part of the gastrointestinal tract which is the duodenum 
in the duodenum the acid neutralized uh, gets neutralized by the production of the bile juice which is secreted by the gallbladder uh, actually produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder and then you know the pancreatic enzyme pancreatic juice releases amylase and trypsinogen uh, which gets converted into trypsin and then acts on you know uh, the carbs and proteins respectively converting you know further in the in the gastrointestinal tract down in the ileum and jejunum you know these uh, from the carbs you end up with g several uh, glucose uh, galactose several sugars glucose galactose lactose uh, sucrose uh, several trioses tetroses pentoses hexoses from the proteins you end up with you know amino acids and from the fats you end up with fatty acids and glycerol this is what we are taught what we don't know for now for sure is why is the behavior of certain drugs different or maybe several drugs or even all of the drugs different in different individuals why is it so why is the bioavailability of a certain drug is different uh, why is the target why is a certain drug not reaching its target organ or target receptor in different individuals there should be something different isn't it so that difference should be hypothesized you know according to me it is hypothesized as a difference in the vpk uh, proportions in individual organs. So, in allopathy, uh, in the guidance physiology, you know, we we are we are definitely introduced to something called the milo interior. The milo interior is the internal environment inside the body, inside the tissues, and this internal environment in Ayurveda is defined by either vata, pitta, or kapha. is is especially trifold. In you know, this. There's a, there could be a vata in the internal environment making the tissues hyper reactive, hyper excitable, biochemical reactions you know precipitate into uh, or triggering more of ionic uh, pathways and the internal environment could be predominantly pitta leading to uh, the leading to the exacerbation of metabolic pathways and uh, the metabolic environment could be kapha dominant uh, leading to the the pace of the reactions uh, becoming sluggish and the tissues could be sluggish in their metabolic or you know assimilative pathways these three agents are definitely Im important because vata actually leads to passage of the ions you know for example if in, in in digestion or in absorption of a glucose molecule the glucose molecule we all know that is bound by the sodium and also by the citric acid so the citric acid should be understood as a pitta molecule the glucose should be understood as a kapha molecule and the sodium ion is a uh, is, is should be understood as a vata molecule so when these three agents of vata pitta kapha are in balance in the intestines then you end up with uh, a co-transport of glucose molecule along with sodium and citric acid and then glucose gets into the blood so if there is excessive of vata there's only you know predominantly sodium ions get uh, bound to the glucose molecules and you don't have enough citric acid so that's why vata people according to ayurveda need to have slightly acidic foods and uh, when there's too much of pitta for example in the intestines you end up with more of citric acid uh, or you know the environment makes sure that you know the molecules are bound the glucose and the citric acid molecules are bound with less sodium uh, so your absorption of uh, glucose gets impaired so the point i'm trying to drive is that going higher up in the gastrointestinal tract you know the the way the carbs proteins and fats are digested must be different depending on the internal environment whether it is a vata dominant environment or a pitta or a kapha dominant environment or a mixed environment and it could be a, a, a vata pitta dominant or a pitta kapha dominant or vata kapha or a vata pitta kapha mixed environment that is a, a mixed when i say mixed it is aggravated the all the three doshas are aggravated and that leads to an altered way of absorption i mean altered way of digestion of these uh, carbs and proteins and fats that leads to end products of digestion in the terminal ileum so you see that the food that is ingested gets digested for sure definitely the nutrients are then extracted from the food and then they get absorbed in the blood but the doshas which actually form an essential component or which essentially uh, guide the the behavior of the internal environment are very very important for which ions get absorbed predominantly which molecules get absorbed predominantly so this internal environment is beautifully explained in ayurveda in the form of vata pitta kapha friends so for the internal environment to change so what we have just talked about is how the nutrients are extracted 
how the long chains of carbs and proteins are broken down into their monomers and then how they are absorbed into the blood but number one and number two is from the blood all these you know individual monomers are supplied uh, to various parts of the body this is what we are taught this is already explained also in ayurveda in ayurveda a certain principle called as the kale kapota nyaya explains how nutrients get supplied tissue by tissue so what we know for now is that the digestive process leads to the formation of the blood isn't it so from the digestion from the gastrointestinal tract the food is digested and then you know the blood is formed now from the blood which tissue gets predominantly supplied by the nutrients is given by a beautiful nyaya called as a kale kapota nyaya in which uh, the even the chronology of tissues is uh, given in the following order they, they talk about seven tissues which are the rasa dhatu the rasa tissue is the gastrointestinal tissue uh, and also you know uh, and also the plasma forms a part of the rasa dhatu we'll not go deep into that we'll we'll talk about you know later but then the rasa dhatu is predominant in the git the rakta dhatu is the blood tissue then comes the mamsa dhatu the chronology as envisaged by the uh, the the great uh, rishi scientists of ayurveda was that the, the mamsa dhatu comes third in order then the meda fat tissue then the asti the skeleton Uh, the bones cartilage in this tissue forms a part of the asti dhatu then the majja dhatu which involves the brain the spinal cord the peripheral nerves and the bone marrow and then comes the shukra dhatu so why did these uh, ancient scientists come up with this order is because when we did our experiments we saw that each of these tissues have their preferential allotment in this order so which means the blood supplies the nutrients predominantly to the muscle tissue first and then to the fat tissue and then to the bone tissue and then to the uh, brain bone marrow and the spinal cord and then to the shukra dhatu and only when these seven tissues are satisfied with the ojo dhatu which guides the uh, functioning of the immune system and the endocrine system actually gets nourished so according to this nyaya uh, of the kale kapota nutrients get supplied to individual tissues in this order in the in in consecutive seven days in a week starting you know from the day you ingested the food or digested the food but for the doshas or the internal environment to change it takes about dvipakshe or two fortnights so if you are proactively trying to target the rasa dhatu or the gastrointestinal tract so what needs to be done is first identify the imbalances of vata pitta kapha in the gastrointestinal tract and then proactively try balancing them uh and when you try proactively balancing them it takes at least a month for the rasa dhatu to uh, get to a state of the dosha balance once that is attained then the rakta dhatu gets balanced in the next month so uh, the rakta dhatu then followed by the mamsa dhatu or the muscle tissue and followed by the meda dhatu uh, then asti then majja and the shukra dhatu it's it so which means for us to bring about a vpk balance in individual tissues uh, it takes at least about 7 months friends so for the ojo dhatu which guides the functioning of the immune system and the uh, endocrine system it starts the ojo dhatu gets into a state of vpk balance only from the 8th month onwards so you see why it takes as long as it takes for the doshas to get balanced because you know from allopathic perspective we should understand that the doshas are the cumulative force of all the buffer solutions present in individual tissues the buffer solutions when the properties of the buffer solutions get altered slowly you know you slowly you know for example you know that the molar one mole of uh, protons actually changes the ph by one only one unit only so you're talking about entire buffer property changing and that takes accumulation of several nutrients in several different combinations and proportions only then the doshas get altered so you just heard about how doshas get transformed in individual tissues for example if you if you're talking about the health of the kidney kidney is a combination of the rakta dhatu and the meda dhatu which means it's a combination according to ayurveda friends by the way it's a combination of the blood tissue and the fat tissue so now you see the blood tissue is at the second in a in this chronological order and the uh, uh, meda dhatu comes fourth so it's only at the end of the fourth month if you are targeting the disease, uh, kidney disease it's only the 
approximately hypothetically end of the fourth month that the kidney uh, starts getting uh, transformed or kidney starts getting regenerated if it is possible. So the dosha balance of the kidneys starts approximately at the, uh, towards the end of the fourth month because by which time the rasadhatu and the medadhatu are already you know if you have done everything right. Uh, uh, in terms of taking appropriate dietary measures, appropriate home remedies, appropriate uh, um, physical exercise regimen and also appropriate uh, um, breathing exercise and then the supplements if you have taken them at the right time, at the right uh, proportion, the right concentration. What happens is the kidney health starts improving from the end of the fifth month onwards approximately. So when you, if you talk about the health of the heart, now you know, you all know that the heart is made up of a neuromuscular uh, tissue isn't it and it also is made up of it's continuously pumping the blood so it is also uh, in made up of the blood tissue so rakta dhatu mamsa dhatu and majja dhatu uh, make up the heart and hence the heart tissue the muscle function you know in our observation we have seen that the muscle function improves towards the end of the third month many pa patients who come to us you know with ef less than 30 their ef slowly starts improving towards the end of the third month and you know uh, people with arrhythmias you know especially vata mediated arrhythmias or kapha mediated uh, arrhythmias you know start improving at the end of the sixth month onwards friends this is quickly about how you need to interpret the uh, health of individual organs so this uh, dosha transformation in individual dhatus or the dosha transformation in individual tissues follows a certain nyaya as mentioned in ayurveda called as kedara kulya nyaya so friends you see how beautifully this is explained and uh, you know we have done several studies of how this transformation is happening in different tissues in different times. So, this, that, so that's why for the, do, for the dhatus to attain a state of VPK balance it takes at least 8 to 9 months. Then you actually try and maintain this balance for the next over 6 months and hence you, uh, you have to treat a patient at least for a period of 12 to 18 months you know in generally and uh, you know some serious cases could possibly uh, you know have to be treated for about over 24 months. So this is uh, quickly about how uh, dosha transformation happens not only dosha but also nutrient tran nutrients transformation and absorption into individual tissues happens in the Ayurveda. Thank you very much. We will meet you in the next lecture. Thank you.